Hmm, I wonder. Oh, hi, I'm Caden here at Smithsonian's National Zoo and Conservation Biology Institute. While I'm here, I wonder all kinds of things about animals. And right now I am wondering, how are aquatic animals so good at living in and around water? Come explore with me and we'll find out. Let's go. We made it. Welcome to a semi-aquatic animal habitat. It's home to one of our animals who loves to live in water and on land. Let's take a closer look. So if we look at this habitat, if we're trying to guess what animal it is, let's first see if it has all its basic needs. So what are the four basic needs every animal needs to survive? Well, if we're looking around here, the first thing I see is place for food to be. So I see places that lots of insects, frogs, turtles, um, bird eggs, all kinds of things to hide so this animal can find food. I also see water. Do you see that stream flowing by? All animals need water to survive, to drink, and this one also loves to play and swim as well. Another thing all animals need is shelter. If we look at these grasses, some of the logs over here, shelter is important for animals to be able to get away from predators that might be chasing them or hide out from storms. I see lots of good places for shelter. And finally, this one's a little bit harder to see. It is invisible. Everyone take a deep breath. Air, that's right, all animals need to breathe. Some animals like fish may breathe underwater. This animal breathes air. So we got our four basic needs. This is a great healthy habitat for this animal. Well, now you might be saying, but Caden, what animal is it? Well, what do you all think? Let me give you a few more clues, see if you can narrow down your guesses. This animal we said loves to live in water and on land, and it loves to eat things in both places. So I mentioned things it ate earlier, like insects. It will also eat frogs, turtles, fish, crayfish, mice, all kinds of different things. This animal is a great swimmer. It has brown fur and a long, slender body. Any guess on what it might be? If you are thinking a river otter, you are correct. This is a habitat for an American river otter. We have two river otters here. One's named Emmett, the other's named Potomac. But I'm still wondering, what makes Emmett and Potomac such great swimmers? How are they fit for living in this semi-aquatic habitat? Let's take a look. River otters have a lot of amazing adaptations that help them live in a semi-aquatic habitat. An adaptation is something that helps an animal survive in their environment. So what kinds of things might help a river otter survive? Well, if they're living a lot of time in the water, they need to be great swimmers. So we look at their body, there's a lot of things that make them really wonderful swimmers. They have a long, slender body that's really muscular with a really powerful tail and short little legs. These short little legs also has four feet that are webbed, meaning just like a duck, they have skin in between each of their toes that allow them to pull and grab and push and really propel themselves through the water. Their brown color also makes them blend in or camouflage in their habitat, keeping them safer. And that thick fur they have keeps them warm when it is chilly outside and in the water. They also have really cool whiskers, which help them to be able to see when the water might be a little cloudy or brown and they can't see as well with their eyes. They're able to see by feeling with these whiskers, helps them find food. But the coolest adaptation I think they have for swimming, besides their webbed feet, are their nostrils. 
Not only can they close their eyes when they're swimming, but they can also close their nose so they don't get water in their nose. Really cool. I wish I could do that. So these river otters have a ton of adaptations. If you think about other aquatic animals, what adaptations might they have? Maybe a duck or a beaver or a sea lion. What adaptations help them survive in the water? See what you can come up with. Clean water is really important for all animals, including us and our otters. So what kinds of things can we do to help keep water clean? Well, we can pick up trash. If we find litter on the ground, we can make sure we put it in the right spots. We can recycle or put it in the trash just to make sure it's not on the ground. If it's left on the ground, it might blow or wash into waterways when it rains or is windy. We can also use our reusable water bottles like this. That makes it so there's less plastic in the water floating around for them. Well, our otters were really, really fun to learn about. Thanks for wondering with me and coming to explore with me. Is there anything you wonder about? If so, look it up. Go find some answers and bring an adult with you to help. They can learn along with you as well. Thank you for joining. Have an utterly fantastic week, everybody. Bye.